Happy Thursday. I have two items, uh, actually one item at the top. Uh, the United States strongly condemns the violent terrorist attack uh, today, May 22nd, against innocent citizens in a market area near People's Park in Urumqi in the Xinjiang uh, Uyghur Autonomous Region of China. We offer our deepest condolences and sympathies to the victims, their families, and all of those affected by this tragedy. I'm sure you have seen the Secretary's statement on the events in Thailand, which I'm sure we will talk about, but I just wanted to flag that for everyone as well. Matt, go ahead. Right. Uh, okay. I'm sure there will be questions about the China attack, but um, I want to start with um, Thailand. Um, I think we were probably all impressed with the alacrity with which you guys came out and decided to um, – and called this a, a coup d'etat. Um, before we get into the practical implications of what that means, can you explain why why it was that you, you were so so quick um, to make this determination, given the more last couple of coups have not been uh, have not been labeled such? Uh, is there a new foreign policy team running the show now? Do all the lawyer did all the lawyers have? Take today off. What what's the what's the explanation, or was this just too obvious that it couldn't be uh, not called a coup? Well, every circumstance and every country is different. Obviously, there's a an interagency uh, process that looks at each of these situations, and the determination was made, as you know, by the Secretary's statement. Okay, but he said there's no justification for this military coup. Does that mean that there there some coups are justified? I think it's a, a statement, Matt, to make clear that it's unacceptable what's can, happened on Can the we path. go to an antecedent matter just to make sure that it's absolutely crystal mm -hmm. clear? So this is indeed the administration's formal legal determination that a military coup transpired in Thailand, correct? Yes. Thanks. Um, so uh, can you explain to me the difference between what happened in Thailand as opposed to what happened in Egypt? No, I'm not going to do an analysis of different countries. Uh, we look at each situation uh, differently and separately, uh, and obviously there are different circumstances in each country. Well, so this was the determination made about the events in Thailand, and hence it was uh, in, uh, uh, stated in the Secretary's uh, statement this morning. Well, can we go back to college days for mm -hmm. a second here mm -hmm. and compare and contrast what are the differences between what happened in Thailand and what happened in Egypt. I'm not going to do an analysis of, of the events in different countries. Is, is that because uh, is that because there is no – because there is a lack of consistency in, in terms of how the government makes these determinations? It is not. There are very different circumstances with different events that have happened, and we look at each of them separately. All right. um, why, why did you decide – I mean, you're, you're well aware that in the case of Egypt, you ultimately decided not to make a determination, mm -hmm. and Secretary Burns went up and briefed the Hill <clears throat> to say that. Why did you make the decision this time to make the determination? I know the circumstances are different. What I'm interested in is what is it that is different in this circumstance that made it compelling for you to make such a determination? It's not about being compelling. It's about looking at all of the uh, events on the ground and looking at the information that's available. That's what we did in this case. That's what we do in each case. And so that's why uh, we made the determination. But, but it's, it's – that doesn't explain why you made the decision here uh, <clears throat> when you chose not to make a decision the last time I'm just around. not going to do a comparison from the podium about events in different countries and an inter internal interagency process. Okay. So does that mean that uh, everyone – well, I guess it does mean the entire – everyone – the whole whole of government is united in this decision and the whole of government wasn't united in, the, in an Egypt decision? Is I'm that not suggesting that at all. This was uh, – the Secretary's statement conveys the view of the United can, States government. Can we, can we talk about the implications? Yeah, that just much sure. what's the, pra cut. the practical yeah. effect? Absolutely. Um, uh, well, uh, first, uh, at this point what we're doing is we are reviewing our military and other assistance to the government of Thailand. Uh, we've taken preliminary steps to suspend military engagement and assistance while we consider the facts on the ground. This is a standard part of the process that would take place. Uh, so right now there's a comprehensive review of that going on. Uh, the State Department and USAID provide approximately $10 million annually in bilateral assistance to Thailand, only a portion of which is assistance to the Thai government. 
bilateral funding does not include uh, uh, funding from global accounts, which vary, of course, by fiscal year. So how, do you, does that mean that it, 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 that some total is $10 million and some of the $10 million will be legal, you will have to suspend? Legally, the, not all of it. Is that well, what that is being reviewed right now. So, uh, as we review it and we have a final determination made about uh, okay. if there will be some for that will still be for mm -hmm. us writing this right now, mm -hmm. is it accurate to say up to ten million could be suspended because but, of the determination? That is accurate. That is yeah. accurate. No, no, but I thought that, and the way the law is written, says no assistance may be given to a country whose government or whose head of state, has been, et cetera, which means that it should not just be the bilateral assistance, but also potentially money from the global accounts that is also implicated, correct? And that is not included in the approximately 10 million bilateral. That is the bilateral money. Obviously, we look at every component of how the law applies. This just happened today, as you know. So our legal teams are reviewing, and certainly we will be uh, implementing it to the full letter uh, of the it, law. But it could be more, though, right? In other words, it's not just a, the bilateral assistance, the global accounts, like the health money and, and stuff. Can't that, isn't that also a Where cut, it applies, cuttable? we will apply it. I don't have an analysis okay. so of that no, but I just, I is just it more than one then to say, just, hold on, Arsha, then is it more accurate to say, given the points that he's just made, that up to $10 million in bilateral assistance plus an unknown, as yet unknown, amount of uh, money from different pots. <laughs> if would it's be cut. applicable from other pots, I don't know that it is yet. Obviously, that review is it will be is ongoing and will be underway. Uh, more on Thailand. Yes. Uh, um, go ahead, Lucas. What precautions, Jen, are you giving Americans that are in Thailand? Uh, the embassy has issued an emergency message alerting American citizens to developments. It's something we do on a standard uh, basis, as you know. Uh, we're not at this time advising American citizens to depart. Uh, we urge travelers to consult our website, and as you know, we review the security situation in every country on a regular basis. And if you had a honeymoon or a bachelor party planned for Thailand, would you recommend going through with that? Or a bachelorette. <laughs> or a bachelorette party, thank you. Well, thank you for the clarification. Uh, again, uh, we have not, um, we're not advising uh, American citizens to depart. Uh, I would advise any bachelor or bachelorette <laughs> to consult our website, depending on the timing of their uh, weekend plans or week plans, whatever they may be. Go ahead. Uh, were you caught by surprise by the decision of the Thai military to 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 do a coup d'état? Because you said this week that you had conversations with the Thai military, so was it a surprise? And given your historic uh, ties with uh, Thailand and with the Thai military, you had no leverage to tell them this is a bad idea. I'm not aware of prior notice. I haven't asked that specific question, but uh, I think uh, I'm not aware of it. Uh, we have called on, we have called uh, Thai uh, military uh, officials. Uh, uh, we have called on them, of course, to immediately restore democracy and civilian rule. We're trying to make contact with Thai military leaders at this point in time. Who who is? So is that, is that being done with, by Secretary Kerry or by Secretary Hagel? Who is the uh, Department person? of Defense is obviously the appropriate um, okay. so is there any, for that. Is there any contact with the uh, former, formerly civilian government in this building? Uh, we have know? been in touch, but uh, we're uh, working uh, to maintain <coughs> contact uh, with the interim civilian right. government. Clearly, things are very fluid on the ground. Um, and yesterday, you made a point of noting that martial law is, was, in fact, allowed by the Thai Constitution. Mm -hmm. um, presumably, you then believe that suspending the Constitution is not constitutional. Is that correct? I think that is fair to assume. That would be a unique Constitution that, be, that allowed right, for that. Right. That would be a something of the obvious, which mm -hmm. Wasn't the I realize you don't want to get into um, into comparisons, but I believe the Constitution of Egypt was also suspended when when uh, when that non coup coup happened. Do you recall? Uh, again, Matt, I, I appreciate the opportunity, but I'm not mm. going to compare. Do we have more in Thailand or uh, yeah, one topic? more? One uh, more. Go ahead, uh, Thank you. As far as uh, ASEAN nations are concerned, it's very important for the U.S., uh, uh, for the uh, president most probably goes always for the ASEAN meetings. Are you in touch with the ASEAN nations and because they are so worried about this, uh, whatever happened in uh, Thailand, and uh, so much is already going on in the region as far as South China Sea and all that. Uh, so 
What is the future of now? I uh, certainly we are remaining close contact with neighbors in the region, and uh, that is the case today as well. Mm -hmm. Is the global amount of money that the U.S. government gives the government of <coughs> Thailand, um, regardless of what accounts it comes from, do you do you have that number? I'm happy to check with our team and uh, get that number for did you. Did you try to get it and they did not have it? They couldn't tell you. They usually can't. I will check with them and see if there's more to provide in response to your question. Can go I go ahead. back to Xinjiang? Sure. Um, so. Just to clarify, it is a determination of the State Department that this was a terrorist attack? That is what I stated in my statement. And um, is the State Department getting concerned because this latest attack seems to be a part of a pattern of escalating attacks within the province? Is there a concern that there's going to be further attacks or the implications if this continues? Well, based on the information reported by the Chinese media, this appears to be an act of terrorism targeting random members of the public. Uh, we don't have further information about the attack, uh, so I wouldn't want to draw any conclusions about its meaning. And lastly, has there been any anti-terror cooperation with the Chinese or any plans to engage in it? Uh, we engage with the Chinese on a range of issues. I don't have anything specifically new to announce today. Except for cybersecurity. Wait, we do. We, our preference is to engage on cybersecurity. Let's go to a new topic. Jen, yeah. go ahead. Margaret. Jen, um, at the OPCW today, mm -hmm. the U.S. Uh, raised some concerns about lack of follow through with treaty obligations on the part of Syria. Um, tail end of the statement, the ambassador pointed out that inform the phrase was information continues to accumulate on toxic chemicals being used in chemical weapons attacks. Mm -hmm. um, that suggests that in this accumulation there is new information. Is the U.S. any closer to making a determination um, about what happened in these recent attacks? Well, as you know, Margaret, and we've spoken about a bit in here, there are recent reports the Secretary has spoken to uh, that are concerning uh, about the use of chlorine. Uh, the OPCW, uh, which is the appropriate international entity to look into those reports, is looking into them. Uh, that is certainly a process we support. Uh, but I don't have any new uh, announcements or information to provide today. Uh, because the Secretary did say publicly, I think it was a week ago, that he had looked at some of the raw data. Is that a process that he's regularly checking in with as this information continues to accumulate? Again, we and the OPCW and other international entities look at a range of information available, uh, as was the case last summer as well. But. I don't have anything new to report today on uh, and just, these cases. I, just to clarify, I don't remember if the Secretary spoke to this or not, but uh, I know he had months previous. But with this enforcement of the last 8 percent that the U.S. raised concerns about, in addition to the production facilities and underground components, um, is there any military force still being used um, as an option to get follow through here for this foot dragging that the U.S. accuses the Syrians? Well, our focus out. at this point, we, as you know, haven't – the President has never taken options off the table, but obviously uh, in this case, uh, the remaining 8 percent is a, an, uh, a, an issue that we are concerned about, hence we speak about it frequently. We're working with the international community, with the OPCW, with the UN. You've seen the UN uh, and the OPCW say they would do everything possible to get to that site uh, so we continue to support those efforts, but that certainly is not the point we're at at this point. But if that June 30th deadline uh, comes and goes, as this statement from the U.S. Ambassador today raises concerns about it being almost inevitable at this point, that option remains on the table at, for lack of compliance? Again, we're not at that point. I'm not going to predict where we'll be at that point. Uh, we do feel there is more that can be done between now and June 30th by the Syrian regime. Go ahead. Um, Daniel Wani, who's the husband of Miriam Ibrahim, has publicly stated that he is a U.S. citizen. Yesterday, Senators Blunt and Ayotte sent a letter to Secretary Kerry and to DHS Secretary Johnson that said of Miriam Ibrahim, quote, she is the wife of U.S. citizen Daniel Wani. My, my first question is, is that a true or a false statement, specifically that Daniel Wani is a U.S. citizen and that Miriam Ibrahim is his wife? Well, we don't have a Privacy Act waiver uh, in this case. I will say that, uh, so I can't speak to that. I will say, and just to remind everyone, through our U.S. Embassy in Khartoum, the White House and the State Department have communicated our strong concern to the highest levels of the government of Sudan over this case. We've also joined with other embassies in Khartoum to express our concern in a widely distributed public statement. 
Uh, U.S. Embassy officials have been engaged in the case from the earliest days. I can't speak to specifics, though, uh, because of the reason I outlined. So even though Mr. Wani has publicly stated in the press that he's a U.S. citizen, he says he's come to the State Department specifically to ask for help to bring his family here to the United States, where he claims to be a citizen, you cannot say whether or not he's a citizen and whether this is his wife? I'm abiding by the law. It's it would be illegal for you to acknowledge that he's telling the truth when he tells reporters a privacy he is a U.S. Act citizen. Has not been signed. Okay, okay let's if, move on. if in fact he were a U.S. citizen and this was his family being held in jail in Sudan because they're Christians, would it be the policy of the U.S. State Department that this family of a U.S. citizen should be allowed to come here to the United States? Uh, I'm not going to speculate on that. Obviously, we've expressed concern because of how horrific. Uh, these reports in this case is, and we have done everything we can and everything possible as uh, a U.S. Uh, our U.S. embassy. So has he needs to sign a written document saying that you can agree that he's a U.S. citizen. That's correct. Right. Uh, I'd like to welcome my colleague to the Anti-Privacy Act waiver <laughs> campaign. Um, does he? Is that enough? Or does she have to sign one as well? Uh, well, obviously, to speak to, broadly speaking, any individual uh, to right. the media, all of you, so they would even, have to sign a privacy. So act. even if he signed one and you were allowed to speak, you could only speak to him, you could not speak about his, uh, her. Is uh, that correct? I believe that's correct. Right. And then, I, did, did you, were you ever able to uh, get answers to the questions that I had about this case um, a couple days ago about the senator's uh, Re request or urging the U.S. to grant us her asylum, is it possible, either uh, just logistically or legally possible, for you to grant someone asylum who is in prison, not who is not on U.S. territory? Well, uh, again, Matt, uh, this, as I mentioned the other day, is obviously under the purview of uh, the Department of Homeland Security. They would be the appropriate outlet to speak to that. Um, so I would point to them. Is it, but is it not your understanding of the asylum law that they have to present themselves either in the United States and ask for it or at least to an embassy that is technically U.S. territory, an embassy or consulate, something that is, is that, that is, is that your understanding? That is how it has worked, but I am not an so expert even, on asylee. Okay. So the request. question, I guess, and maybe it is best directed at DHS, even if you wanted to grant someone asylum, you, you wouldn't be able to. Is that... Again, unless, would, they would, sh unless they showed up. I would point anyone to DHS for the right. across-the-board rule on that front. Do we have more on Syria just before we well, move just, on? Just Syria? A, no, uh, real, real quick, just to follow up <coughs> okay, to that. Okay, go ahead, Lucas. Because I think it's a good time. Does the State Department have an update on uh, possible nominations for the Ambassador of Religious Freedom? Uh, well, we are firmly committed to protecting and promoting religious freedom around the world. Uh, the White House and the State Department are actively working to nominate someone as soon as possible. Promoting religious freedom is a whole of government effort. President Obama, Secretary Kerry, various ambassadors and other senior U.S. government officials routinely raise religious freedom concerns in their interactions with foreign governments, and that will continue even when we have uh, someone in place. This position has been vacant for eight months, and the President himself said he wanted to see someone nominated. How long does it take to nominate somebody? It remains a priority. There are certainly plans to, and uh, in the meantime, uh, senior officials will continue to raise these issues. Can I just go back to the, the, uh, the uh, conversation or the representations made to the Sudanese government? Do you know at, at what level is this? Is, is, is there an ambassador in, in Khartoum now, or is it a charge? Uh, I, I don't have the level, Matt, uh, that, that the communications were done. Is it something that Secretary Kerry would take up with the Sudanese foreign minister? I mean, the Sudanese foreign minister is, I believe, not among the uh, people who you are banned from talking with, like Bashir, so. I don't want to speculate on that, uh, but I can check and see if there's more clarity we can get all of you on that. Okay, so it is, if, any, if there's been any contact between the U.S. and Sudan and from Washington, mm -hmm. and also at what, at what mm -hmm. level, and does it just go to the foreign ministry? Do you go to the presidency? Mm -hmm. Do you go to their justice ministry or whatever? Thank you. Certainly. Uh, Syria, go ahead in the back. Yeah, <clears throat> another agency has uh, obtained a new set of photographs demonstrating systematic torture committed by Syrian regime against the uh, against the opposition. Uh, it shows like uh, <clears throat> corpses with uh, gouged <clears throat> eyes and uh, 
body parts sat next to them. I don't know if you saw the, those pictures or the not. The Caesar photos? Sorry? With the, the, what are the photos called? <coughs> uh, it's, uh, I, I think I sent you a link like to those photos. It's about uh, Syrians' opposition, like dead bodies, corpses, like with their eyes gouged and then uh, they have like body parts set next to them. Uh, it seems that uh, pictures from um, for uh, Syrian opposition like uh, members uh, being uh, well let me uh, say there's been a range of horrific photos out there um, and as the world looks at these uh, photos and uh, the range that have been out there these atrocities are exactly why um, we have supported efforts like the one uh, that occurred in the UN Security Council today which was uh, a vote on a resolution to refer the Syrian regime uh, to uh, to the ICC. But, yeah, but uh, and it seems like the, uh, Russia and uh, China has blocked uh, blocked the referral. So, um, as the United States like supporting the efforts of the Syrian opposition, what are, are you planning to do anything about that? How? Well, we're extremely disturbed by Russia's and China's vetoes and lack of support for holding perpetrators accountable for the atrocities committed in Syria. Despite uh, this veto, we will continue supporting practical steps that we can take to lay the groundwork for accountability and transitional justice processes, including supporting efforts by Syrian civil society and the international community to gather evidence that could help to hold accountable at a future date those responsible for atrocities in Syria. And so uh, we felt that it was strongly that it was important to make clear that uh, those who are responsible should be held accountable, which is why we supported this effort. And we will continue to look for other efforts to support. One more thing. Uh, do you think like the world is like turning their backs like to Syria? And I'm just worried like after like with all those events like flowing in, uh, around the world like at some point Syria will become another Iraq. Uh, Saddam's attack occurs in the 1988 like uh, with chemical weapons and nobody well, like... there was broad support uh, for this resolution today uh, despite uh, aside from the uh, veto uh, by Ch Russia and by China and there was broad support in the international community for bringing an end to uh, the horrific uh, acts of the Assad regime. Right. Do we have more in Syria? Syria, new topic? Yes. Go yeah, ahead. North Korea. Korea. North Korea. Yeah, and recently the, between the North Korea and uh, Russia established their uh, economic cooperations and also the China and Russia as well. What is the United States view of these two big brothers surround beside the North Korea? Well, I think I spoke to the China and Russia uh, relationship yesterday, so I point you to that. I'm not aware of what you're referring to as it relates to Russia and North Korea. But it, it seems like you know increasing of the North Korean power that the uh, concern of a rebalancing in Asia. So I'm not sure what you're specifically referring to. So maybe you can elaborate on what you're referring to. Because of uh, increasing of uh, North Korean power, because the Chinese and Russia is uh, surrounded by uh, you know, more power to North Korea, so you know, kind of sanctions. Well, we've been stuff. working with China and Russia uh, as well, but certainly China has been an important partner in uh, putting the necessary pressure on the North Koreans, uh, and uh, ex especially given uh, their provocative threats and provocative actions. So they are one of the partners in. Uh, the six party talks we continue to work with. Do you have any comment on the shelling by the North Koreans of a South Korean vessel? Uh, let's see. We are closely monitoring the situation on the Korean Peninsula in coordination with our South Korean allies. We urge North Korea to refrain from provocative actions that aggravate tensions and instead focus on fulfilling its international obligations and commitments. We continue to urge North Korea to exercise restraint and take steps to improve its relations with its neighbors. Go ahead, Arshad. Once, um, <clears throat> we have a story out of Moscow quoting a source as saying that um, Russia and Iran may sign a contract this year for uh, Russia to build additional reactors at Boucher. Uh, do you have any comment on that? 
Uh, I haven't seen the story. There have been reports of that for uh, some time. Uh, obviously, uh, that would be something that would be an issue of concern. We've raised it in the past, but I can check with our team and see if there's uh, any new response uh, to that specific report. Can you Thanks. Go back to Thailand for Which time? Thailand? Um, sure. Yeah. I was one, you, you mentioned earlier that you had taken initial steps to suspend military uh, engagement and assistance. I was just wondering if you could go into a little bit more detail and, and flush that out a little well, bit. Well, the, these events just happened in the last 16 to 24 hours. So what I mean is uh, we are beginning the process of reviewing and taking a look at uh, both the assistance and what is applicable, uh, any other um, military partnerships there would be. I think the Department of Defense has spoken to this a little bit. So uh, we'll have updates, I'm certain, on a daily basis. But obviously, these events are, are fairly uh, new. Oh, go ahead. Ukraine? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm wondering if there's any update at all on the preparations for the election on uh, this weekend in terms of your concerns or not concerned about the conditions on the ground and the number, especially given this incident with the, where eight uh, Ukrainians were, were killed. Mm -hmm. uh, well, first, um, according to reports, which is what you reference at the end here, at least eight Ukrainian servicemen were killed and dozens injured when separatists attacked a checkpoint outside of Donetsk. Uh, a separatist attacked a Ukrainian border guard detachment in Luhansk. Six border guardsmen were injured. Separatists also reportedly killed a Ukrainian National Guardsman and injured two more in a clash elsewhere in Luhansk, and border guards claimed to have fired on three cargo trucks in a car that had attempted to illegally enter Ukraine from Russia. Uh, we condemn the attacks today in eastern Ukraine by pro-Russian separatists that killed a number of Ukrainian troops and wounded dozens more. Calls by the separatists for Russian military intervention to protect civilians are ridiculous, considering it is the separatists who are per perpetuating violence. Uh, at the same time, uh, the vast majority of the country remains calm. Uh, the Ukrainian government's preparations for Sunday's elections are otherwise on track. Uh, the Central Election Commission has made special accommodations, as I've talked about a bit in here, to enf uh, enfranchise voters from Crimea and areas where pro-Russian separatists are working to disrupt voting. But certainly, uh, the separatists, the efforts by the separatists to perpetrate attacks uh, in specific targeted areas or, s or even a minority of areas in, uh, on election offices in Donetsk and Luhansk uh, is concerning. Um, and uh, we certainly call on uh, call on, uh, we co condemn these actions and certainly can call on these to, to, to stop. Is it, apart from the actual violence and people being killed, being concerning, I assume, um, are there additional concerns? Are you concerned that the separatists are trying to create an environment in which the election cannot be held with, and, and that they might be doing this uh, on orders or so on, or might be being instigated by some by people outside? Well, we've long uh, viewed, uh, we've long believed uh, there to be a strong connection, as you know, between Russia and the Russian separatists, and so that hasn't changed. These are happening in uh, a small number of areas. Uh, we do have a, uh, you know, a substantial security effort on the ground where we're assisting uh, wherever we can, uh, the efforts by the international community. As you know, there are a thousand observers on the ground as well. So we're going to take every step we can take in the coming days to ensure people can vote across but, Ukraine. But even even with the, the violence that you just talked about and condemned, you think that the conditions are okay to have in those specific areas? Do you think the conditions are okay to go ahead with the, the election? Uh, well, even in Donetsk and Luhansk, where some of these took place, um, pro-Russian separatists have only taken uh, a few dozen individual buildings in Slovyansk, um, and this is, a, is an area with a population of over six million people. So uh, there are, again, a range of steps that are being taken by the OSCE monitors on the ground. Uh, we'll continue to support and, those. And you're convinced that the only instigators here are the separatists? There is nothing coming from the pro-Kiev side. Is well, that? as we've seen in the incidents that we seem to talk about on a daily basis, they seem to be the source every time. One of the things the Russians have uh, talked about, complained about, is the um, uh, composition, no, not the composition, the placement of the observers, the OSCE observers. Are you aware of these complaints? I'm not aware right. of those complaints. Um, maybe you could take the question. I believe that they are um, 
they are concerned that there are more observers in the east, more observers have been deployed in the east than in, than in the rest of the country. But I, I could be wrong. Well, certainly it shouldn't be a surprise that in areas where there has been more volatility, there would be more observers. All right. And then um, my last one on this, is there any update on these um, detained uh, journalists? Have, have you reached out to the Ukrainians? Have you, have they responded? Is there any greater clarity on whether you would consider them to be legitimate journalists? I don't have a great deal of new information, uh, but the Ukrainian government did today release the British reporter they had detained on May 20th. Um, he's publicly said he was treated well by the Ukrainian authorities prior to his release. I don't have any additional updates on the other two. So the, so, okay, so you, so you have not heard back, as far as you know, you have not heard back from the Ukrainians about what they're, why they're holding the other two and whether or not they'll be released. Well, it's the same reasons we've talked about over the last couple of days, but I don't have any updates on release so, plans or anything along okay, those lines. Right, but, but I, what I'm asking is, have the Ukrainians gotten back to you to, you, you did say the other day, I think, that you had reached out to the Ukrainians to find out, to find out what, what had happened and what was going on. Do you know if they have gotten well, back to you? we encourage them to look into. Right. In, to investigate the incident, as, a, as as far as I know, that is ongoing, and there hasn't been a conclusion reached yet. Did you ask them to investigate the incident of the British reporter? Uh, I think we asked them to in investigate, investigate all, all of, of the incidents. All of them. So mm -hmm. they released the, the Brit, but the other two are still, and you don't know why. I don't have okay. any more information, though. Thank you. Uh, do we have any, one moment, do we have any more in Ukraine? Go ahead, Catherine. Do you have an update on the Russian troops on the border? With Ukraine. Nothing has changed uh, since uh, yesterday. Uh, obviously, uh, we, uh, as I said yesterday, there had been some reports of movement, but it was too early to say uh, what that uh, specifically meant or to conclude that that meant they were moving away. Okay. And that's still your conclusion? You just don't know? You can't tell? Correct. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, any more in Ukraine? Okay. Uh, let's just go, let's go to uh, Turkey and then Scott and then we'll go to India. Go ahead. Thank you. Today, Turkish energy minister stated that uh, Turkey began shipping uh, Kurdistan regional government's oil to the world market. Uh, do you have any comment on that? We've seen these reports uh, and we'll discuss their implications with our partners in Turkey and in the Iraqi Kurdistan region. Our most immediate concern is for Iraq's stability. Uh, we've had a long-standing position on this issue, as you know, that has not changed. And Iraq is facing a difficult situation. We've been clear that it's important for all sides to take actions to help the country pull together uh, and avoid actions that might fo further exacerbate, exacerbate divisions and tensions. So we'll be in touch with both sides. Uh, have you talked to Baghdad over this uh, recent decision? <coughs> have we talk talked to the Maliki government? on this I particular issue we we will be uh, uh, we will be in touch I'm certain with them as well we're in touch with them on a, a regular basis but uh, again I don't have any specific so, updates on contacts but go ahead uh, do you see this shipping to the world market Kurdistan regional government's oil is this a factor for division contribute to division of the Iraq is this your assessment well, uh, our position has long been that we don't support exports uh, without the appropriate approval of the federal Iraqi government, and certainly we do have concerns about uh, the impact of those continuing. Going back to Turkey, uh, more than a week ago you called on Turkish government uh, to do uh, investigation and you called also accountability. Uh, over a week, uh, What's your assessment? Do you think that 301 people, minors killing, are being investigated uh, as a cult? I don't have any new assessment today. Obviously, it's natural that they would be in the lead. Uh, as we've noted many times, our heartfelt condolences go out to the families. Uh, to our knowledge, the government uh, of Turkey has, well, they've expressed gratitude for our offers of assistance. They. Uh, have not, uh, they have been, they have said that if they need it, they will ask for it. They have not asked for it at this point, but uh, again, we're following it closely and in close touch on the ground. One last uh, point or question. Uh, as you know, the protests have been going on, and you commented on this a couple of days ago. 
uh, a few months ago, Amnesty International uh, uh, called on U.S. not to sell uh, tear gas and other uh, armored vehicles. Uh, do you have any reassessment of that policy right now, selling to Turkey? Well, Turkey is a NATO ally. Uh, the, we have approved export licenses to allow the Turkish government to purchase U.S. products, including tear gas. Uh, these products are intended for law enforcement to use to save lives, maintain order, and protect property. Uh, and they're held to a certain standard as well. Um, a couple of days ago, you were asked about these uh, comments allegedly made, comments and behavior allegedly by Prime Minister Erdogan. Um, has that have you pursued that at all with the Turks? Has, has, has anyone reached out to him or to the foreign minister? I'm not aware of any further clarification of them. We're clearly in close touch with them, but I don't have any new, nothing new right. to provide on that particular Move topic. to the Middle East, uh, Israel. Uh, can we go to yeah. Scott first? Oh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Scott. You had a statement earlier this week about fighting in Mali, in Kidal. Mm -hmm. The government troops have now retreated from Kidal and AQIM is now in control of that town. Any thoughts on that? Uh, well, um, there were also, we put out a statement obviously prior to um, some of the events over the last couple of days. And uh, so let me just reiterate here, or state here, I should say, that we're distressed by Wednesday's escalation of hostilities in Qudal and particularly by the loss of life uh, and injuries uh, that happened earlier this week, but also uh, on the 21st, which was just yesterday. Uh, this renewed violence came as the international community was working strenuously to encourage the MNLA to relinquish government facilities. We do welcome uh, the President's commitment in his public address that his uh, priority is dialogue, uh, and we um, are certainly hopeful uh, that that will uh, be the case moving forward, but those words have not been supported by actions uh, to date. The actions to date are the withdrawal of government forces from the town and AQIM re-seizing control of that territory. So how does that well, fit? Well, there have been a range of incidents, though, over the past couple of days. So what we want to see is consistency um, and um, a focus on dialogue and not escalation every couple of days here. Is the U.S. taking any active support to try to help Malian forces or the French forces in Mali to retake that territory? Uh, I'm not aware of our level of involvement on that level. I, I can check and see if there has been any. Uh, uh, yeah, Middle the Middle East. So um, yesterday I asked you about this shooting incident in which the Palestinian uh, teens were killed, and your re reply has caused a little bit of emotion. I wanted to give you the opportunity to clarify, if you wanted to, whether or not uh, the phrase their soil or its soil referring to Israel was, was what you meant to say. Well, if I would have uh, stated it, I would state it differently if I were to state it again today. As okay. we know, uh, the events took place in the West Bank. What I was uh, meaning to convey, which I did several times, is that uh, naturally uh, Israeli, uh, Israel has the lead uh, in any investigation. Okay. Uh, and have you been in touch? Do you know if you have raised this, the, the, the shooting issue with the Israelis? Have they gotten back to you um, in terms of an investigation? Because the, the foreign minister was not as... We talked, discussed yesterday that the Israeli foreign minister was not uh, exactly appreciative of the call for an investigation. Uh, we have been in touch. Our understanding is that is the plan, but um, I don't have any additional details on it. Okay. And on the, I asked also the other day, I think two days ago, about an attack on an Israeli journalist by Palestinians. Did you, you, you did. I actually do not have any new information on that, but let me venture to follow up on that. Okay. Um, and then just more broadly in terms of the whole peace process or not peace non process, I guess now. Um, is there any is there any movement since the since the quartet movement at all? Has there been any contact between you know, senior senior US officials on and officials on either side? There's regular contact uh, about a range of bilateral issues, but I don't have any updates on uh, contact specifically about the peace process. Okay, so you're not aware of anything happening. Well, we on have the, a range of contacts process. and conversations with both the Israelis and Palestinians, so I can't rule out that it's ever been discussed. But there's nothing new to report. Okay. India. Uh, India. 
Uh, Madam, uh, Mr. Narendra Modi will take the oath of the office of the Prime Minister of India on Monday, 26th. He has invited all the neighboring SARC leaders, including the Prime Minister mm -hmm. of Pakistan, Mr. Nawaz Sharif. Any comments uh, on this gesture before even becoming the Prime Minister? I reaching think I out spoke to, to this the other day, Goyal, um, and I said we welcome increased engagement between India and Pakistan and their leaders, and uh, this is certainly an example of that. Uh, but, but one more quickly, any decision at the higher level from here, anybody attending this uh, ceremony? Uh, I spoke to this, nothing's changed. No plans to send a representative of uh, standard for events like this in India. Mexico. Mexico and then Nigeria. Did you say, uh, Margaret, go ahead. Okay. What progress did Secretary Kerry make on his visit to Mexico in securing the release of the American Marine, uh, Andrew Tomarasi, while Secretary Kerry was in Mexico? Uh, well, uh, since let me first state that since his arrest, uh, Mr. Tomarasi has been visited 11 times by consular officers. We have raised any concerns we might have about his treatment with the appropriate authorities. The consulate and embassy have talked to numerous Mexican officials regarding his case, including the authorities at the prison and the Mexican foreign ministry about the case. So we've been very engaged, and the secretary did raise this issue yesterday during his meetings, but I don't have anything to update you on beyond that. Did, did Secretary Kerry ask for leniency? Again, I, he raised the issue, as we've been consistently raising for some time. It, Secretary Kerry uh, also said on his visit there's mutual respect between the United States and Mexico, and mm -hmm. if such mutual respect exists, <coughs> if a young man uh, fails to exit properly and misses his exit and goes to uh, another country, isn't there a difference between error and malice? Well, uh, I think, again, this is a, a case, Lucas, and you're probably familiar with the details uh, here, but uh, within a foreign country, a U.S. citizen is subject to that country's laws and regulations, which sometimes differ significantly from those in the United States. Uh, obviously, this is a case we've been concerned about, hence we've raised it, and we visited him 11 times, so we'll continue to press the case. And when Secretary Kerry mentioned there was an increase of guns going from the United States and Mex to Mexico, did he have this case in mind? I think that's a, an issue that has been raised for quite some time, long before this case has been an issue. Uh, I think Nigeria, we're going to Nigeria. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, on Nigeria, White House notified Congress yesterday about these 80 airmen who are going mm -hmm. in to assist with the search. Um, since State Department has lead on this, I'm wondering if there's any decision to change the makeup of the team, the non-military team that's assisting in the search, make it bigger. Send them to Chad. It's do something anything. we continue to evaluate, and obviously we have an embassy a, on the ground in Chad, and we've been engaged from the beginning of this process. I'm not aware of any plans to change the makeup of our specific so team. No. But our team is an interagency team that mm -hmm. has people from every agency, so um, it really depends on decisions made by agencies, uh, by each agency through the coordinated process. So there's, there's no State Department or. or Part of this team is not going to Chad along with this um, introduction to this Well, we have an embassy base. on the ground there already, um, and so we have a range of senior officials who can assist as needed. Well, you know, the, the capital of Chad is way, way, way far away from where these people are supposed to be going, isn't it? Are they going well, to the if capital? There, if there's a need, if there's a need, my point is that we have officials on the ground. I mean, what I mean is you, in the country. In Matt, Chad, right. mm -hmm. okay. Who can assist as needed. There may not be, because this is obviously military officials, but they're all closely coordinating with but, each well, other. But do you know if there have been, uh, I mean, maybe, I, maybe I'm just completely barking up the wrong tree here, but do you know if officials from the embassy in Njimina had gone to wherever it is that these 80 people are going? I, I'm not aware that they have. I can check and see if that's been necessary or needed um, in this case. It may not be. Go ahead. One on Vietnam. Um, we have a story out of Hanoi quoting the Vietnamese Prime Minister as saying that Vietnam will take various steps to defend itself in the territorial disputes with China, including potentially taking uh, legal action under international law. Um, <clears throat> uh, the administration has long taken the position that these should be resolved through international law. Is taking some kind of legal action, the kind of thing you'd like to see Vietnam do? Uh, I have not had a chance to talk to our team about this, Arshad. As you know, uh, our belief on a uh, bottom line here is that dialogue between the parties is the right path forward, but it's a fair question, and I will check with them and see if we have anything further to convey.
I have um, two quick ones. Um, one, I don't know if you will have seen, there's apparently been a gas explosion in western Moscow that has reportedly injured one U.S. diplomat. Do you mm -hmm. have anything on that? I do. Uh, a U.S. Uh, embassy employee in Moscow was injured in a reported gas explosion at an apartment building in Moscow earlier today. The employee has been hospitalized and is receiving medical treatment. Other employees who lived in the building have been evacuated. Our thoughts, of course, are with the embassy employee and her family. Uh, we appreciate the support we have received from Russian authorities, including first responders. Uh, and beyond that, of course, there are just a few details available about um, the cause. Um, was this a uh, apartment building that houses a lot of American um, diplomats? or? Uh, there are some who also live there, and those have been evacuated. I don't have a specific number for you. Okay. Uh, I don't have that level of detail. They are an embassy employee, a U.S. citizen, but. But you don't know if they're actually, if, if, if they're, you don't know what the, what branch of the U.S. Correct. government they're actually in, just yes. at a. Yeah. Yeah, quick one uh, on India, back going back. Mr. Modi also said that. Uh, after he becomes prime minister, his first visit as mm -hmm. prime minister of India will be Japan, not in, uh, U.S. Uh, any comments on that because of his business, uh, uh, pro-business and investment in India from the Japanese? Well, uh, President Obama invited him to visit when he uh, sometime uh, this year, uh, so we'll look forward to that <coughs> when that can be arranged. Thank you. Go ahead, Catherine. Um, I'm wondering about the reports of an Egyptian teen, he's 17, who traveled to the U.S for a um, engineering fair. Um, he is now reportedly seeking asylum in the United States and I was wondering if the State Department has had any contact with him, his legal representation, or the, gov the Egyptian government. It would be the De Department of Homeland Security uh, if that's what he's seeking. Um, I've seen those reports as well, so uh, that wouldn't be under our purview here. Um, just, just speaking generally, I mean, what does it say about the state of the Egy Egyptian government that the 17-year-old is fearful of further prosecution if he goes home. Well, uh, I think we've clearly stated our concerns about uh, what's been happening with the judicial system uh, in Egypt uh, in a range of cases, hundreds who have been sentenced to death, and we've made no secret of that. I don't want to venture to an analyze based on the reports of one individual what that means because we've made no secret of our concerns in the past. Qu quick for us uh, on Thailand. Uh, you mentioned, you know, United States suspend uh, military cooperation. I know, you know, this happens in this 10 hours, last 10 hours, so it, it's just beginning the process. But uh, I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, are you, United States, uh, considering, you know, na another step uh, if situation is getting worse? And under what kind of condition or situation, you know, United States is going for the next step? Well, uh, uh, right now, again, uh, we are focused on uh, trying to make direct contact with Thai military leaders. We are working to maintain contact with the interim civilian government. We're reviewing our military and other assistance to the government of Thailand. That's really our focus right now, so I don't want to get ahead of that. Did Secretary Kelly uh, make a phone call to his, counter, uh, you know, his counterpart in Thailand? Uh, he has not, no. Go ahead, Arshad. You said that you're trying to make uh, contact with the military, with the Thai military. Are they not taking your calls? Again, it would be uh, the appropriate counterpart is the Department of Defense. So I mean, as a government, but uh, we haven't been in contact. We've reached out. So I'll let you draw your own conclusion. And then you said you're trying to maintain contact with the uh, erstwhile civilian government. Mm -hmm. um, are you unable to reach them? Well, the situation is clearly very fluid on the ground. We have been in touch, but again, obviously, maintaining contact through this time is an important priority. But it, it, since the coup, have you not been able to reach them? Is that the correct no, inference we have to been. draw? We have been. Okay. That's not Thank correct. You. Um, right. Go ahead. In the back. Uh, I just have one question about Egypt. Uh, since uh, they talked about, like, uh, there's a uh, there's this uh, Egyptian citizen, uh, sorry, uh, an American citizen in Egypt uh, who's held uh, in prison in Egypt. Uh, his name is Muhammad Sultan, and he's been on hunger strike like for over 100 days now. And ha have you tried 
to contact the Egyptian authority about his release. I mean, he uh, reports saying that he's in a very, very bad medi uh, medical condition. Well, in any case where a U.S. citizen is detained, we would uh, use all appropriate consular services. I don't have any specific update on this case, but I can uh, talk to our team and we can get one uh, to you. Can, can you can you take sure. that for me? You know oh. that I said, broadly speaking, any U.S. citizen. So you cannot leave. reveal whether that person in Egypt is a U.S. citizen. I'm happy to get you a copy of Privacy Act a lot. Maybe you. I just want to. You're not team. certifying that he's a U.S. citizen, the man in Egypt. I'm just informing you of how this process works, and what well, we're happy to get you the documents if you need to educate yourself on how it goes. Okay. Uh, do we have any more? Go Can I have one, one on Iraq? Uh, uh, I have. Uh, I've been having problem. Like I, I I'm writing a. Uh, a story about the Jewish uh, Iraqi Jewish documents, and everybody refused to talk about. It. So I would love if you uh, say any comment about it. There has been, uh, you know, there has been like efforts like to keep those documents in the United States. The Iraqi government won the documents back, and you've been like trying to find a solution in between. I'm just trying to understand your position, like your actual true position about uh, those documents. Are you going to return them into Iraq? And if you're going to return them like to Iraq, when are you going to do them, please? Well, I'm hearing frustration in your voice. Um, we will look into this issue. I don't have the details on the issue, so I wish I could give you a satisfying answer, but we will venture to do that. Can, uh, can, you, take can you take that? I will look into it. I'm happy to. Thank you. Uh, a week or so ago, and forgive me if you answered it since, but I'm it's just we're calling now. It has to do with the Syrian election and ad, and v voting. Did you ever? Did we ever get an answer to that question about what there were complaints from the Syrian government mm -hmm. that they were being that that there was being made difficult in Europe and in the United States for expatriate Syrians to vote in the in the presidential election. I don't believe election. we did get you an answer to that um, unless it was emailed to you, but uh, I, don't, I, will, I don't remember we will, we will put that on the list as well. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.